The transfer silus fascia plane block, or TFP block, is a truncal block that targets the L1 nerve branches, namely the ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves. Spread can also occur to the subcostal nerve which is a branch of the T12 spinal nerve. We have found this block particularly suited to providing analgesia in anterior islet crest bone graft harvesting, as the block is performed proximal to the L1 branches that innervate the anterior islet crest. It would also be a suitable analgesic option in any surgery involving the L1 dermatome, including inguinal hernia repair and open appendectomy. A question that is often asked is, how does the TFP block differ from the TAP block? The TFP block is designed to block the L1 nerve branches, which the TAP block does not reliably cover. It does not, however, cover the dermatomes above L1 and T12. Local anesthetic is injected into a deeper tissue plane, the plane deep to transversus abdominis rather than superficial to it. The site of injection is also posterior to the mid-axillary line, unlike the classic ultrasound-guided TAP block. The ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves emerge from the lateral border of psoas major, inferior to the 12th rib, and course over the anterior surface of quadratus lumborum. Lateral to quadratus lumborum, they initially run deep to transversus abdominis for a variable distance, before piercing transversus abdominis to enter the transversus abdominis or tap plane between internal oblique and transversus abdominis. Anterior to the islet crest, the nerves ascend gradually, piercing first internal oblique and then external oblique. However, the location at which this occurs varies widely between individuals. In the TFP block, the nerves can be consistently targeted where they lie deep to transversus abdominis, before they ascend into the tap plane and before they give off their lateral cutaneous branches and branches to the iliac crest. At this point, the nerves are sandwiched between the fascia of transversus abdominis and the transversalis fascia. The transversalis fascia is a thin aponeurotic membrane which lies between the transversus abdominis and the extraperitoneal fascia and is part of the general layer of fascia lining the abdominal cavity. Note that the transversus abdominis and internal oblique taper off posteriorly into a common aponeurosis, also called the thoracal lumbar fascia, where they meet the lateral border of quadratus lumborum. The tapered end of transversus abdominis is an important landmark for performing the block. This composite sonogram illustrates the sonoanatomy of the region. Starting anteriorly, the three layers of the abdominal wall can be readily identified. Internal oblique is usually the thickest layer, while transversus is thinnest and darkest. More posteriorly, the transversus abdominis and the internal oblique muscles taper off into their common aponeurosis, the thoracal lumbar fascia, and abut against quadratus lumborum. The dark hypoechoic area, deep to the tapering off of transversus abdominis, is retroperitoneal fat and not the peritoneal cavity, as can clearly be seen here. This eliminates concerns of visceral perforation. The target for needle tip placement is just deep to the fascia of transversus abdominis. Injection here produces a visible pocket of local anesthetic that pushes the retroperitoneal fat downwards. Injection above the fascia distends the transversus abdominis muscle, as has happened here, and is a sign that the needle needs to be advanced one fascial pot deeper. It is recommended that the patient be placed in the lateral decubitus position. However, it is also possible to perform the block with the patient in a supine position. The patient is turned towards the operator with the operative side uppermost. The machine is placed on the opposite side of the bed. A curved probe is recommended in most patients unless they are very slim, as the wider field of view and better penetration facilitates recognition of the anatomy. The probe is placed in the mid-axillary line just above the iliac crest. The external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis are identified and traced posteriorly to where the transversus abdominis tapers off into its aponeurosis. The quadratus lumborum is often, but not always, visible just posterior to this taper. Tilting the probe slightly corded into the pelvis often improves the view of the tapered end of transversus abdominis. An 80mm block needle is inserted in plane to the probe in an anterior to posterior direction. 
An echogenic needle is useful in improving visualization of the needle tip, given the relatively steep angle and depth. The needle is advanced through the external oblique and internal oblique, aiming for the tapered tip of transversus abdominis. Penetration of the fascial layers between the muscles is signaled by both tactile and fascial pops. Once the needle tip has pierced the deep fascia of transversus abdominis, a test injection is performed. Correct needle tip position is signaled by creation of a pocket of local anesthetic between the transversus abdominis fascia and the transversalis fascia. If this is not seen, the needle tip has been advanced too far into the retroperitoneal fat and should be withdrawn slightly. If the needle tip has not been advanced far enough, expansion of the transversus abdominis will be seen. A volume of 20 ml is generally recommended for injection. For analgesic blocks, a dilute long-acting local anesthetic such as 0.25% bupivacaine or 0.5% ropivacaine may be injected. It is recommended that epinephrine be added to the local anesthetic solution to limit plasma concentrations and reduce the risk of systemic toxicity. In general, the TFP block is a safe block. Block failure can occur, particularly if the sonoanatomy and correct plane for injection are not correctly identified. Local anesthetic systemic toxicity is always a risk to consider, particularly if combined with another regional anesthetic technique such as a brachial plexus block. The risk can be minimized by the use of epinephrine. Peritoneal puncture is an unlikely complication as the peritoneum does not lie under the transversalis fascia plane in most individuals.